Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 44 of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, we've gotten some good response on the last podcast about the zone system, and we'll pick up with some more concrete information uh, that fleshes out some of the theoretical stuff that we talked about in that first zone system podcast. Uh, but for now, this episode of Camera Position, I'd like to take us to uh, the installment number three of the photographer's bookshelf, uh, taking a look at important books that I think photographers should look at or read or attend to in some way uh, to help photographers understand a little bit more about their medium. And uh, to start this one off, uh, I thought I would just read you a f the first paragraph of, of this book. And uh, so here we go. Humankind lingers unregenerately in Plato's cave, still reveling, its age-old habit, in mere images of the truth. But being educated by photographs is not like being educated by older, more artisanal images. For one thing, there are a great many more images around claiming our attention. The inventory started in 1839, and since then just about everything has been photographed, or so it seems. This very instability of the photographing eye changes the terms of confinement in the cave, our world. In teaching us a new visual code, photographs alter and enlarge our notions of what is worth looking at and what we have a right to observe. Wow. Well, with the first uh, paragraph there, Susan Sontag, the author of On Photography, a book that was published first in 1973, lets us know that this is no ordinary book of photographic uh, ideas and uh, criticism. Sontag, uh, one of America's most important literary artistic critics, uh, was born in 1933 and died just fairly recently in uh, late in December of 2004, and is someone that I think is worth paying attention to, not because she was a photographer, because she was not one, but rather because she was a great thinker about photography and certainly one of the great thinkers about lots of things related to our living in the world and the world that we live in and what that world is like and how it is that we confront it and certainly what it is that she has to say in this book on photography is extraordinarily relevant to photographers working today and photographers who are going to be working on into the future. Ideas about how photography impacts us, how we use it, how we view it, and what photographers do to change the way in which viewers look at and interpret photographs. Right up front though in that first paragraph, Sontag lets us know that this is no ordinary book and it is with those few sentences that she lets us know that this is going to be a book of some intellectual challenge, uh, that it's going to give us some amazingly great ideas to think about, um, and that it's also going to presume an awful lot of uh, prior knowledge on the part of the reader. And quite specifically, in the very first sentence, she assumes that the reader knows uh, who Plato is, and she also assumes that the reader knows uh, what Plato's cave is, and for many of us, Plato's Cave is not an unfamiliar concept, but it may have been something that's been a long time since we've confronted it. So let me just sort of recap it here. Uh, the, the great uh, Greek writer Plato uh, had an allegory in his writings, the allegory of the cave. And uh, the allegory of the cave is intended to uh, kind of explain the idea of people not really quite understanding what it is that the world is. So in this allegory, Plato likens people untutored in the theory of forms, or the way the world looks, to prisoners who are chained in a cave and unable to turn their heads. All they can see is the wall of the cave. Behind them is a fire that's burning, and between the fire and the prisoners, there is a sort of a ledge along which uh, puppeteers can walk. The puppeteers who are behind the prisoners hold up puppets that cast shadows on the wall of the cave. The prisoners aren't able to see the puppets, the real objects that pass behind them. What the prisoners see and hear are shadows and echoes cast by the objects that they don't see. And I'll, I'll put a little illustration of Plato's cave right here in the podcast and then also 
I'll uh, I'll put one uh, on the uh, cameraposition.com blog. So quickly, let me just go back now and read you that first sentence again. Humankind lingers unregenerately in Plato's cave, still reveling its age-old habit in mere images of the truth. And then she goes on to say, but being educated by photographs is not like being educated by older, more artisanal images. And talks then about how many more pictures there are around and so forth and so on. So it seems as though what Susan Sontag is saying here in these opening few words of her book is that, well, the photograph is nothing more than an illusion, very much like the shadow pictures on the back wall of Plato's cave, that what we see in a photograph has no exact relationship with what it is that's in the world, that the world itself portrays itself through a photograph in a way that we can't really ever know it. That the illusion of the photograph is much like the illusion of this shadow picture that Plato describes in his allegory of the cave. And I think that that probably comes as kind of a shock to a lot of photographers who presume that when we make a photograph of something that what we're looking at is that thing. That thing miniaturized or in some cases enlarged and held in our hand or viewed on a screen or in some other way looked at by us that mimics the exact thing that was out there in the world. And that word mimic, I think, is really the key, right? Because what, what Sontag is saying here is that the photograph isn't the thing, that the photograph is simply a sort of image of this thing that can stand in for it in some cases, but really doesn't tell us the exact thing that standing in front of that scene or looking at that particular thing would show us. And therein, I think, is one of the critical and most important parts of this book, that the photograph itself is different from the world. And on one level, that's fairly obvious. But on another level, I think it, it uh, certainly gives us some ways to think about how the photographic document is a very different thing from the thing that it records and how we deal with that interface between what it is that the real world is and what it is that the photograph of that real world is becomes an important part of our job as photographers. So with these first few sentences, obviously, uh, Susan Sontag is letting us know that uh, she means business and that she is interested in talking about not just the way the photograph looks or or talking about making photographs, but really is interested in talking about the way in which photographs have impacted humankind, how it is that photographs have changed the way we view the world. And uh, that, I think, is really uh, the most important part of this book and the ideas in, contained in the book are certainly ideas that I think every photographer or really in many ways every viewer of photographs and aren't we all viewers and users of photographic imagery uh, should know. So what I thought I would do for you here is just share with you a few passages uh, from Susan Sontag's On Photography. Much of Sontag's book deals with the way in which photography affects us affects us as citizens of the world. One of the things that she says early on is this, to photograph is to appropriate the thing photographed. It means putting oneself into a certain relation to the world that feels like knowledge and therefore like power. So she's making some fairly strong suggestions about what it is that the photographer does and the power that we wield as people who point cameras at things. And the, the things that we point cameras at, she suggests, have a great deal of significance because suddenly, as soon as we point a camera at them and click the shutter release button, something happens. Uh, this object uh, becomes appropriated and therefore feels as though it is more important to us and therefore by extension to the world. A little later on in the book, Sontag says, in photography's early decades, photographs were expected to be idealized images. 
This is still the aim of most amateur photographers, for whom a beautiful photograph is a photograph of something beautiful, like a woman, a sunset. In 1915, Edward Steichen photographed a milk bottle on a tenement fire escape, an early example of a quite different idea of a beautiful photograph. And since the 1920s, ambitious professionals whose work gets into museums have steadily drifted away from lyrical subjects, conscientiously exploring plain, tawdry, or even vapid material. In recent decades, photography has succeeded in somewhat reversing, for everybody, the definitions of what is beautiful and ugly. She goes on a little bit later to say, to photograph is to confer importance. There is probably no subject that cannot be beautified. Moreover, there is no way to suppress the tendency inherent in all photographs to accord value to their subjects. So here she's helping us, I think, try to figure out ways in which we can approach contemporary photography that may not be of beautiful things, of beautiful subjects, looking at the idea that to photograph something suggests that the thing is beautiful, regardless of whether everyone would consider it beautiful. Uh, the act of photographing it imbues it with a sense of importance, a sense of beauty. Not everything that Sontag has to say in her book has to do with uh, photography as something that she considers necessarily a positive thing. Uh, let me share with you some, some little other bits here. Recently, photography has become almost as widely practiced an amusement as sex and dancing, which means that, like every mass art form, photography is not practiced by most people as an art. It is mainly a social right, a defense against anxiety, and a tool of power. Like a car, a camera is sold as a predatory weapon, one that's as automated as possible, ready to spring. Popular taste expects an easy, invisible technology. Manufacturers reassure their customers that taking pictures demands no skill or expert knowledge, and that the machine is all-knowing and responds to the slightest pressure of the will. It's as simple as turning the ignition key or pulling the trigger. Like guns and cars, cameras are fantasy machines whose use is addictive. The photographer both loots and preserves, denounces and consecrates. Photography expresses the American impatience with reality, the taste for activities whose instrumentality is a machine. <laughs> wow. So I'm guessing that if uh, you haven't encountered Susan Sontag before and you hadn't heard this analogy of the camera as a gun before, that might come as a bit of a shock. The idea that the photograph uh, or to photograph something is uh, a sort of a predatory instinct and that uh, very little skill is involved other than finding the subject, hunting the subject down. Um, so uh, there are not necessarily all sort of sweetness and light comments in uh, Susan Sontag's book. Uh, certainly there are, though, some things for us to consider and to contemplate as creative photographers in terms of what it is that we're doing when we find a subject uh, that intrigues us or interests us and that for some reason, in some way, we want to possess that subject through our photographic images. At the very end of her book, uh, Sontag brings us back to this idea of the Platonic world and Plato's cave uh, with this last little bit that I'll, I'll end my uh, quotations from On Photography with. The powers of photography have, in effect, deplatonized our understanding of reality, making it less and less plausible to reflect upon our own experience using the distinction between images and things, between copies and originals. It suited Plato's derogatory attitude toward images to liken them to shadows, transitory, minimally informative, immaterial, impotent co-presences of the real things which cast them. But the force of photographic images comes from their being material realities in their own right, richly informative deposits left in the wake of whatever emitted them, potent means for turning the tables on reality, for turning it into a shadow. Images are more real than anyone could have supposed, and just because they are an unlimited resource, one that cannot be exhausted by consumerist waste, there is all the more reason to apply the conservationist remedy, 
If there can be a better way for the real world to include one of the images, it will require an ecology not only of real things, but of images as well. So she sort of leaves us with a kind of a hopeful idea, the idea that it is possible for us to treasure, use, uh, and value images, and the idea that images in and of themselves need to be conserved in the same way that we need to conserve the real world that begat the images. So again, this is not uh, in, in any way a lightweight read, uh, but I think it is an important idea in terms of how it is that we see photography, the way in which we use photography, and how photographs affect us both as photographers, as creators of these images, and also in terms of how the world consumes those images and what images mean in a grander scheme of things than in the, the sort of overall or more general ideas about imagery. So I would urge you to take a look at Susan Sontag's On Photography, certainly something that would probably be available in most local libraries. And uh, I've also linked up both here in the podcast and also in uh, on the cameraposition.com blog, uh, an Amazon link for the book. Um, take a look and see what you think. It is a book that ta talks an awful lot about uh, not only the, the sort of ideas behind what photographers do, but also what that uh, action of making photographs, what that action means to the photographers and to the rest of the world. So thanks again for being here. I appreciate everyone who is out there listening and subscribing. And uh, to those of you who uh, write to me, I try to get back to you as fast as I can. If I don't get back right away, uh, bear with me. I uh, get an awful lot of mail, so I appreciate everybody's comments. And uh, thanks again. Hope to see you again on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com.